love we love how Casey just shares and he gets so excited so I'm, I'm excited about that uh, let's go ahead and open up with prayer real quick father you are so good to us so very very good we thank you for the last few days of wonderful weather here in January Lord I thank you that we are able to gather together tonight we thank you that you have gifted us especially in this house with so many gifts lord we are just so amazed and we are so grateful for everything that you've done and lord tonight as casey shares i just ask that it flow so freely from him and it be exactly what you want said lord i ask that every one of us who's here and the people that are watching online that they will that we will all receive from you what what we need to have in order for us to complete our, our walk with you. And Lord, I also ask that um, as we worship you tonight, that it just be just such a sweet smelling savor to you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on down, Mr. Casey. Come on down. <laughs> Next contestant. <clears throat> Whew, the price is right. <laughs> what a great price. <clears throat> Let's just worship him real quick before we get into the word. Let's, Lord, we just give you glory tonight. God, we praise you. God, we exalt you. We thank you that your word is working in our lives. God, that your word is, is, has dominion. God, your word, God, it drives out the darkness, God. Your word, your word, God, brings light. Your word brings salvation. Your word brings life. Your word brings strength. Your word brings healing to our bodies. God, your word brings healing to our minds. God, we thank you for the joy of the Lord as our strength. God, tonight we just draw, we draw from the wells of salvation with joy tonight. And I thank you, God, that you have good things for us tonight. God, that we just open our hearts to you tonight, to receive from you. Not to receive from me, God, but to receive from you. Because you alone know what we need. God, you alone, God, can speak to us a word in due season and completely set us free. God, you said that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Father, you are the truth. You are the truth, and as we know you, as we're intimately acquainted with you, God, we are free. We are free. So tonight, I just declare freedom in this house. I declare freedom over your people. I declare freedom. I declare the truth is setting us free. The truth has dominion. And Lord, we yield to that truth in the name of Jesus. We yield to your word. We yield to your promises. And God, I thank you as we open the scripture, Father, that you breathe life on it. God, that we're not just reading scriptures, but Father God, you are breathing and speaking to each one. So Lord, we thank you that the angels are here to minister to us. I thank you that the heavens are open. God, there's nothing in our way. And we just declare that this atmosphere is open, and the heavens are open, and the Holy Spirit is moving. The angels are encircling this place. And Lord, we just declare your glory be revealed tonight in the name of Jesus, in you and in me, Lord, thank you. <clears throat> we just sometimes got to stir up yourself, you know. I've been doing that. I've been anticipating this word because it's been changing my life as I get into this and as I read it, as I put it into action. Um, I'm a different person than I was before I started learning this stuff. And it's, it goes along the same lines of every time I've come here and I've spoken to y'all, I always basically, I see the threads. I see the message. It's very clear to me what God is, is wanting to speak. And it's, and it's funny because no matter how much time goes in between, it's like, the Lord just takes me right back to it and says, just keep on going. And, and that's the way he works. That's when you know the Holy Spirit is the one driving the boat. 
because I don't want to drive this thing. I, I tell you what, when I, was, when I was 17 years old, I borrowed my dad's car, <laughs> and he had a 1988 Mercury Cougar with a 5.0 Mustang engine, and this thing flew. Bob had one, too. This is my Uncle Bob. Here's my dad's brother. He had one, too. He remembers this. He knows where I'm going with the story. He was, he, was a, he, he was a witness to what happened. <clears throat> well, what happened was I brought my dad's car, and uh, uh, I wasn't saved. Come on. I was uh, on my way to getting saved. But I knew better. But I went and picked up my buddies, and we went booze cruising, and uh, we wanted to go partying and we had this nice car and we were cruising around well after all day of drinking and driving you know it tends to catch up to you uh i i started to just i was i was drunk i shouldn't have been driving and i was i ended up flipping my dad's car to make a long story store short several times uh the car i was going uh probably 80 90, 120, I don't even know. And I lost control of the car, and the car just flipped multiple times all over the highway. The car was upside down, and I was trapped in the car with my arm underneath me. And I still have a scar on my arm here to remind me. <laughs> that, was, uh, <clears throat> that was a close encounter I had with... Uh, with death and uh, the Lord saved me from that and uh, he can tell you that car was completely a pancake and there was a spot right above the door the driver's side door where there was an indent right there and I'm convinced that's where my arm was <laughs> because uh, shortly after that I had a dream actually it was not long after that when I got saved and I gave my life to the Lord and I had an encounter with the Lord, and then I had a dream, and I seen, I seen the car driving on the highway, and I seen an angel come and went boom, like karate chopped it. And I woke up, and I was like, ooh, like the Lord was showing me that an angel saved me and saved my arm. And I couldn't move my fingers, I couldn't move my arm, I couldn't move nothing. Now, I mean, if I would have lost my arm, how would I be playing the guitar, you know? I'm, I mean, I, I maybe could, but... I'm just thankful for his mercy because I, I probably would have went to hell because I wasn't saved. I was so selfish and consumed with myself that I was hurt. I was hurt because my mom died when I was 15 and, and I tried to keep feeling myself covering the pain with whatever I could find, drugs, alcohol. It didn't matter. I just wanted to fill that void, but nothing could fill that void. And it led me to death. <laughs> And by the grace of God, I'm standing here, and I'm able to, to preach the word. After that, I got saved, 18, and, and gave my heart to the Lord truly. I got into Bible college, and I just started going after him. I'm not saying I didn't struggle with stuff. not saying because I did. It took a long time to get the world out of me. As many years as you fill yourself with the world, come on, it just, it just doesn't happen right away. Some, maybe some people it does, but for me, it took a process of me having to overcome things and me having to learn things the hard way a lot of times for me to realize, like, I can't keep doing this. Even the Word says that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. And that's Jesus. And I wasn't even planning on sharing that with you guys. That was for free. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to know me a little bit because it's part of my testimony. It's part of what God has done in my life and has changed my life. And I can stand before you clean and, and, and free from, from all that stuff that the enemy's been trying to kill me my whole life, but he can't. So the last time I was here, who, who was here last time I preached? Most of you guys were here. If you missed it, you can go back to December uh, 6th, I believe is what it was, December 6th. And it's on the Facebook uh, page for Healing Rivers, if you want to go back. It was a powerful message. Um, 
about uh, a lot of things, man. I, 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 there's so much. Um, I was talking about the throne of God. I was talking about the new Jerusalem. I was talking about the walls of salvation. I was talking about uh, so much. Just if you can, if you got time, go back and check that out. This it it all it all comes together here. Whew. Tonight I want to let's just practice laughing for a second. Can we do that? Ha ah. ha. Ha ha, ho ho, he he. Thank you, Jesus. There's something about a merry heart. It, it's it's like a medicine. The the word says, and and there's just his joy. I had this dream. I'm gonna start with this. I had this dream. Let me back up. I told you about my dream about a tornado the last time I talked about. The Lord came to me in a tornado, and He was speaking to me in a tornado. And uh, this was a dream I had the day after Christmas. And uh, I came and preached. And uh, two days later, I got hit with COVID on Thursday. I was preaching about salvation, the walls, protection, all the blood of Jesus, all this stuff. Two days later, I got hit hardcore. The enemy's a liar. And I knew it was an attack. And, and so I just want you guys to just make sure you pray for us your leaders, your worship leaders, because this is a real war that we're in and the enemy's not playing around. And and I knew it, but it hit me hard. I was, I can still feel effects. And that, it's, that was the, the 8th of December and we're already January 16th, 17th. So I'm believing God for restoration, not just in my body, but in the body of Christ. Because I, I believe that this is the year of restoration. And I've been declaring it since day, the, the first day of this year. And I was standing up here the first day of January 1st, and I was prophesying. The Holy Spirit came on me. I don't know if you guys realize it or not. I just started to speak. I started to proclaim that this is the year of the favor of the Lord. And I said, this is a Michael Jordan year. This is a year of championship caliber faith that we are going to rise above and we are going to see results. We are champions and we're going to experience the championship that he has given to us. And I am not stopping, I'm not backing down and I'm not relenting on that word because I know this is the year of his favor. And I'm playing for keeps. And I'm in a war, we're in a war, and together we are strong. And together we need to be serious, and we need to cover this man of God, this woman of God, and everyone else who is up here. We cannot let a day go by that we're not praying and interceding for, for the leaders of the church. Amen, I wasn't planning on saying that either, that's... I'm going to let the Holy Spirit flow through me, and if I don't get to this, I don't care. Because it's not about me and giving a message. It's about letting the Holy Spirit speak to you. And I believe He uses me. And there's a lot of times I could go home and I can't stop weeping because how the Lord used me. And I'm just like, I feel so humble, I feel so unqualified, I feel so like, not worthy. But... He made me worthy, so who am I to argue with him? He made me qualified, so who am I to say I'm not qualified? I'm not going to argue with God. I'm not going to say, Lord, but, 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 we know how that goes. Moses tried it. It didn't work well for him. And I'm not trying that. I want God to, to do what he wants through me. My life is his. And, and I know that I only have a certain amount of time, and I'm going to be gone. Just like all of us, we don't know. I could be gone tomorrow. You could be gone tomorrow. We don't know. We have to live every day like it could be our last. And, and I try to live that way. And, and, and one of the things that I'm really trying to do is to, to set my mind, uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 4. As we set our eyes on Jesus, everything becomes clear. And, and Colossians talks about how we, if we've been... If we died with Christ, then we need to set our minds where he is, on things above. We need to, to stop looking on the things of the earth, 
But, but look, look up. What did he say to Abraham? He took Abraham outside and said what? Look up. Look up in the sky. Because why? When you get a bigger picture of God, you get a bigger picture. We were just talking before service. You, you look up in the sky, you can just see a small percentage of what is there. There's light years and light years of, of, there's things that we've never even, like they got the most powerful satellites and telescopes that ever, and they still can't see the end of what God's doing. Because God is so big, every time he breathes, galaxies are, every time God breathes, it's expanding, expanding. They're never going to find the end of it because there is no end. God is, is infinite. And so are we because we're created in his image. And the same Holy Spirit within us, the same Holy Spirit that breathed upon, he breathed upon this world and made everything that we see, he's breathing upon us. He's breathing upon this word. He's breathing upon it on you so you will fulfill his purpose. We're his workmanship in Christ, created unto good works that he prepared beforehand that we should walk therein. We set our minds on him as we do like we, 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 we start to see a, a, a different picture. I, I heard a story uh, of, of two guys that, that were going hunting, right? And, and one of the guys was terrified of snakes, right? So they're in this forest, and the one guy is so focused on the ground looking for snakes and, and so caught up that, that he doesn't see a snake because he's so scared of the snakes. And this other guy, he's walking and he's seeing all these things. He's seeing all these things that are happening all around him. He's seeing eagles and he's seeing birds flying over here and all these things. And this other guy is so concerned with that he missed everything else that was going around him. And he had no joy. He was so caught up in what was going on around him. He was looking for the enemy. And I think sometimes we're looking and we're so caught up and we're looking for the enemy and we're like, that we miss what's going on around us. So many people now are so caught up in their phones. I'm telling you, I drive to Springfield quite a bit and you would not believe how many times people, you're driving and they're driving next to you and they're like on their phone and they're, whatever they're doing on their, I mean, I, we're all guilty. I mean, I sometimes pick up and play a song or something on my phone, but I'm not, I mean, it's just crazy how distraction is so bad nowadays. And that's the enemy's biggest toy is, is he, he wants to distract us. If he can distract us with things down here, and we're gonna, look, we're gonna go into this and we're gonna look at some examples here. Philippians 4.8 says, it says, meditate on, on things that are good things that, that, are, that are of good report, things that are pure, things that are holy. Because why? Because what we meditate on takes dominion in our life. We're, we're called to meditate on, on these things of God so they begin to take dim, dominion in our life. Just like he told Joshua, he said, meditate in my law day and night. Meditate, keep your eyes fixed on me. And, and 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, as we turn our eyes as we turn our eyes of faith, we see the unseen eternal realm. It's like, have you ever seen a 3D movie? And if you ever, if you ever been to a 3D movie at the IMAX or whatever, if you ever, you ever tried to watch it without the glasses, it's blurry. You can't see it. it you can't see it very well. But once you put those glasses on, all of a sudden it's like, whew, it's right there. It's in your face. That's what faith is. Faith is, is, we turn our eyes of faith. We, we, we put those glasses on of faith so we can see clear. And everything comes three-dimensional because the Lord is speaking to us. What the Lord is speaking to us, sometimes we let distractions and other things make things clear and we can't see it clearly. But as we set our eyes on Him, everything comes into focus. And your focus determines your mastery. You can't focus on two things. The, if you have a laser beam, uh, if I'm going to laser beam you here, I can't laser beam you both at the same time. The laser beam goes to one place. It's focused. And how the enemy wants to steal our focus. Because he knows if he can have our focus, then he can have, he can work. He can do this behind the scenes, and he can do this over here, and we won't even notice him. 
because we're distracted. Matthew 16, 23, Satan wants to distract you with temporary. We see this in Matthew 16, 23. If you want to turn with me, we'll go there. You all know the story. It's when uh, Peter was telling Jesus, no, nah, you, don't, you don't need to. He was, he was, Jesus said, I'm going to go to the cross. Let's just go there, 1623. Actually, let's back up. Peter 22. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but on the things of men. He was seeing the temporary, temporary realm, and he couldn't see past. All he could see was, No, Jesus, you can't, you can't do that you can't he wasn't seeing the bigger picture and he he addressed satan said satan get behind me because that's what satan does he tries to distract us to only see the temporary to not see the bigger picture to blind us from being able to see what god's doing the bigger picture of what he's doing and jesus said after that if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever des desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it for a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and then will reward each according to his works. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the coming of the kingdom. I've been on that side of the rebuke of the Lord, I, f I feel like, many times in my life. Because sometimes we get so caught up in temporary that, and then we end up reaping consequences of it. We end up getting smacked. Sometimes our choices and our decisions, like, I'm just going to share this, this thing. It's, it's, it's very humbling to me. And I don't like to share it, but it's still part of my testimony, even the bad things. I, uh, just last year, I, I got, I saved up some money and I wanted to go buy a vehicle. I wanted to buy a truck because I, I need a new truck or I felt like I needed a new truck. So I saved up some money and, uh, I was looking on marketplace and different places, you know, for a good deal. Right. So this truck pops up really beautiful truck. I mean, sleek black big tires uh beautiful it was a lincoln mark uh lt and it was it was like a ford f-150 but it was like just beautiful and they only wanted eight thousand bucks for it this was before i guess this was a couple years ago before the prices shot up and so i was like wow what a good deal i like went and looked at it and and it drove it and everything seemed nice and 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 like instead of like praying about it or or talking to my wife about it I was just like gung-ho I was like oh, this has got to be from God this is a blessing you know I was just like in my mind I was like this is too good to be true and I went ahead and I bought it and I was like wow this is awesome and I take it in to to get you know to get tagged and and the, and the guy's like oh I'm really sorry I got a, some bad news for you he's like I won't even put this thing on the lift he said the the, the frame is completely rusted out and I looked under it, and it was completely rusted out. You could put your finger through the frame, and it was just like, like just, it was so bad. And I was just like, <sighs> my heart just sank. And he's like, you need to just drive this thing to the junkyard. He's like, this thing is dangerous. He's like, we won't even. And so I was just like, oh, it it hit me like a ton of bricks. And uh, but. Sometimes you need those hard lessons to learn. And uh, the heart of the lesson, the, the, and I learned a valuable lesson that day. Never rush into things. And I'm usually really good at always praying things first. 
I'm usually really good at talking to my wife about things and, and just not being, but, but it was like, I felt pressure. Like he was like, oh, I got two other guys waiting to get it. If you don't get it, you know, it's going to be gone. You know what I mean? And, and it was just kind of like, well, if I hesitate, I could miss this thing. And, and we can't bow to pressure. We, 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 we gotta, we gotta take everything to the Lord in prayer first and, and talk with our wife. So this, this is, this is the lesson that, that I've am learning and a very hard lesson. Thankfully, I was able to, uh, get at least $3,500 for it. I sold it to a guy that, um, was a mechanic and he was, he was going to put it on another frame. So, but still, I mean, that was like 5,000 bucks just gone, you know, and I still don't have another vehicle. I ended up buying the Ford Escape I, I got. Um, I, but I was like, Lord, but I've seen a lot of things about me that, that I was blind to. And I think pride was, might've been one of them too. And how sometimes like, I don't know, I think there's a lot there that I learned and and I, those are things that I would never want to talk about. But I felt like I felt like the other day I felt that pop up in me. It's okay to be vulnerable and to share those things that are heart wrenching. Because sometimes we have to go through those really hard things in life to, to learn valuable lessons. And as hard as it was, it's like God's mercy was still there and it still is there. Um, it's just, just part of life sometimes. And it's just, I, I'm not going to do that again. And, uh, so now I'm saving my money again, back to square one, which is okay. Uh, been there, done that. Got the t-shirt, uh, burned the t-shirt by the way, cause I don't want to, I don't really want to remember it. So I'm looking up up to him. I don't want these things in this world to distract me to where I miss him. And you look through the scripture and you see so many, how many people missed him when he came. And I want to look at, I want to look at some examples here. And uh, I got a lot here and I know I'm not going to be able to get to it all. But I don't want to miss what he's doing because I'm, I'm looking on this too. You know what I mean? So it's like I got to be open to what he's saying to me to say to you. I wasn't planning on everything that I've said thus far tonight. I wasn't planning on saying. It's, it's just it comes out of you when you're up here just like he knows. He, always. He's like got two scriptures, you know, and a half hour has already gone by. He, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's already time for worship. <laughs> but I'm going to keep trying to, because to, I know what, what is here is powerful. And I know that it's, it's for you tonight. So I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go to all the scriptures, but I'm going to tell you all the scriptures and just write them down and go back and look them up just for time's sake. Okay? But I just want to, I'll give you the scriptures and I'll give you the point and I'll move on so I can get through some of this tonight. Romans 8.68 talks about the war that's going on within us. It talks about the war between the flesh and the spirit. And it's talking about how the war within us is it's won through submitting to the spirit of God. Everything that we're doing, it's, it, it's all a matter of us coming to submit to him. And as we come to submit to him, that's when he flourishes. Just like Galatians 5 and 16 talks about the fruits and talks about the war between the flesh and the spirit, and it tells you all the things that the, the flesh will bring into your life and all the things the spirit will bring into your life. We want the things of the spirit. We want the fruit of the spirit. And all the fruit of the spirit is, is a representation of Christ and his character and his nature, every single one of those. And that's what he's developing within us. In First uh, Samuel sixteen seven, it says, Man looks outward, but God looks inward. Meaning like sometimes we can miss God by looking at an appearance or by, by looking outward 
at someone or, or looking at a, a man of God who's talking to you and he might not look the way you think he should look. He might be wearing a hoodie or and a, and a hat. I didn't wear my hat today. But it, sometimes people judge people by the way they look and the, by the way they appear and by the way they sound or the, by the, and, and sometimes they miss what God's saying to that person because they can't get past the way they look or they can't get past something irritates them about them or something. And you see that all through the word. And Jesus had a way of irritating the Pharisees and making those religious spirits come out and I think true men of God that really have the Holy Spirit have ways to stir up those religious spirits still. And, and, and they start to rise up and you're like, man, I didn't. There's, there's this thing that the enemy tries to, to bring in and, and to imitate. He tries to, to imitate the Holy Spirit, but he can't. But he tries to bring criticism and a critical spirit and, and there's far too many Christians who are so critical and they're so like this, it's, it's, it's disgusting. And it gets on people and I've seen it all too many times where it's like every time you talk to them, you just hear them, they're criticizing everybody and every little, nobody's ever doing anything right. It's always this, it's always that, it's always something irritating them. It's always, it's like that is not the Holy Spirit. That is not the fruit of the Spirit. That is the fruit of Satan. Because he wants to bring divisions. He wants you to be complaining. He wants you to be criticizing, nitpicking every little thing. Because it, because it doesn't fit in your little box of, of what you think it should be. That you completely miss what God is doing. And you're like, why are they getting blessed? And, and I'm not getting blessed. Why is this? And why is that? And this and that. We, we got we to gotta grow up. We got to put that stuff away. When you read in the word, it says, don't do that. It says that's of the flesh and the flesh brings death. It brings corruption. He doesn't want those weeds in our garden. So we have to guard against those things. And, and, and every day, I mean, you know, as well as I do, those thoughts come and we have to take those thoughts under and subject them to Christ. We cannot allow those things to bear fruit in our life. We have to cut them at the root and say, no, I'm not going to talk like that. I'm not. My wife does a good job rebuking me when, when I'm saying things. She's like, we do not believe that. You do not speak that way. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. You know, like she just did it to me yesterday at, at dinner. And she just, no. I'm just like, whew, I repent. Quick to repent. Because I was wrong. I miss it, man. I'm not perfect. You know, and to be honest with you, this last time the COVID hit me, man, it hit me hard. And I was like, I was realizing that I had got some things in me that maybe it's, it's fear or it's something because it's like I was, it's things that I got to deal with because I don't think I should be able to go through that. And, and I want to be a healer. I want to bring healing to people. I know God's word is strong. It's like there's no reason why I should feel like I'm dying. I feel like that's illegal. There's no reason why he should have to. It's like I feel like the enemy is illegally. He's illegally coming on what is God's. And, 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 and bringing damage and, and bringing things. Like I feel like effects in my mind, like, I feel like, I feel like there's certain things that I, like, it takes me a few minutes to think about, like, normal things that I should just, like, it's like, I, I see different things in me. It's messed up my taste. It's messed up, like, different things that I used to really enjoy that I don't, it's like, to me, that, that really ticks me off. It really makes me angry at the enemy because he has no legal right to touch me or to touch people of God. He has no legal right and, and, and when Patrick, when he passed away, man, I was believing God for his healing. I wanted to see cancer destroyed. I want to see cancer destroyed under our feet. Why? Because it's under our feet. There's nothing that should be taken out the people of God, sickness or disease, because he died on the cross for the us to be able to walk in that victory. He illegally comes and, and tries to, 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 to put his nest in our trees. 
and, and to, to, to poop all over our branches and to eat all of our leaves. But I'm telling you what, I'm getting out the shotgun and I'm blasting these things out because they have no place in the church of God, in, the, in our bodies. We are the temple. And when you read the word of God, it says the temple flows living water. When you, his, the, 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 the word God gave him for this church is, is Ezekiel, where, where the, the, the water, the, the living water is flowing, and everywhere the river flows, healing is, is going. Look, look into that scripture. Everywhere you are the temple, everywhere you go, the water is flowing from us. How can it be a pure water when it's been tainted by the enemy? And I declare restoration over your body right now in the name of Jesus. I declare healing over you to spring forth now because you are the temple of the Most High God. And it talks about trees that are all around, that are bearing fruit in their season, and their, their leaves don't wither, and they're for medicine. That's who you are. That's who we are as the body. That thing is not talking about, it's not talking about this temple. I mean, it, it's talking about us. It's talking about you, me, as a body, as people, as, as, the, as the temple of God, releasing the rivers into the earth and bringing healing to the nations. It's you and me. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach the gospel because Jesus died on the cross so we can walk in victory. Man, he, had, he, he, he was crucified. Nails went through his hands. He had the crown of thorns on his head. That his back was shredded so we can walk in peace and we can walk in victory and we can walk in healing. We don't have to be bound by Satan. We don't have to have sickness in our bodies. He died so we can be free. And I tell you, you are free because he set you free. You know him. You know him. You walk with him. You walk with him. You talk with him. I'm fed up with the enemy thinking he can come in to our lives and wreak havoc. I'm fed up with the enemy thinking he can come in to my wife's body and, and take out my son and kill him. I'm fed up with the enemy thinking he can come into my life and steal my finances. I'm fed up with the enemy coming into my life thinking he can, he can strike me down with COVID or whatever it is. I don't care what it is. If it has to name, it has to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is my Lord, I am his temple, and he lives in me. And he does not have room for idols. There's no room for sickness or disease or anything tainted of the world within me. That's why I keep my gates closed. That's why he said in Revelations that no unclean thing will come in. No unclean thing will come in because I have the gates of salvation. I have the walls of salvation and the gates. We are the gates. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're going to preach your word. Lord, we, just, we, we thank you, God, that we're not just, we're not just beating out the air. God, that, that faith brings results, God. God, we're not just praying fleece prayers. God, we're praying precision prayers. God, that, that impact people's lives and that change atmospheres and that change a nation like this region and this nation that we're in tonight, God. Your word goes forth like, like a fire. Your word goes forth like a hammer and it breaks the rocks into pieces. The revelation we have of God determines how we are. If we have a tainted or distorted view of God, then we're going to reflect that same view. If, if we look at our past, and we look at the things, well, I believed God for this, and this didn't happen, or, or this happened, and I was hurt by this person, and this and that, we let those things taint us and taint our faith. Just like I was saying, my wife had to, because I was like, I felt, this thing in me saying like it was fear it was a it was a fear of, of, of a sickness that that got on me and and i it, it it messed with me and it like wounded me and it hurt me so it's like i'm not gonna let anything that i go through 
deter my faith in the word of God. No matter what we go through, no matter how disappointed I feel, no matter what I feel like God failed me, God did not fail me. God does not fail me. And he does not fail you. He will not fail. He cannot fail. He does not fail. He cannot fail. And I know Bob, he took, he took Diane, Diane went away to heaven. God did not fail you. He did not fail you. God is our healer. He loves us. He wants the best for us, always. And Lord, I just thank you for healing tonight, God. Healing in our souls. God, healing, God, where, where we feel like, God, where, where we've been defeated, or we feel like we've been wounded, we feel like we've been hurt. God, we feel like, we feel like you have let us down. God, we just repent of that. And God, we thank you that you will never let us down. And I thank you that you're restoring us, even our faith tonight. It doesn't matter, God. Nothing matters but you. And I thank you, God, that we can have a true focus because we're setting our minds on you tonight, God. We're setting our minds. We're choosing you. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for Ephesians 1, 18 through 20. You enlighten the eyes. You bring hope, and hope releases unlimited potential in us. <clears throat> I got so much here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to skip around a little bit. Every time in Scripture where it says Jesus looked up, something supernatural took place. In Matthew 14, 19, he looked up to heaven and he blessed and broke the bread and the fish. You can write these down and look them up. Mark 7, 34 says, and looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, be open. And the man's ears were opened. In John eleven forty one, you're all familiar with this, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. And then he turned around and said, Lazarus! What did he tell? What did, what did God tell? I already said that. What, what did God tell Abraham? Look, go look up. Look up. You know how many times it is in Psalms, Jeremiah, Isaiah, I mean... This one, this one I really like. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven in John 17, 1. He says, Jesus lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father. And he began to Psalm, or John 17, this, this model prayer for us of, of intimacy with his Father as he's praying for you and for me. And, and right before he's going to the cross, he has this intimate time with God. John 4, 35, it says, you remember Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look. The harvest is already there. He was telling them, quit worrying about if I'm hungry. Quit worrying about this temporary things because my will is to do, or my work is to do the will of my father. My, that's my food, he said. And he's saying, if you look up, and look and see. It doesn't matter what it looks like. He's saying get out of the natural realm. They say four months until harvest. Listen, it might be winter. It might be barren out there. But I'm saying lift up your eyes and look. The fields are ripe. We, he's saying, speak the word. We declare that it is harvest time. It is harvest time. We create our own season with our mouth. We're the prophets of our own life. And we're speaking life and we're speaking, this is our season. We don't have to wait four months. We don't have to wait until, we don't have to wait until the, the seed blooms and grows and wait for the process. We can bypass the process. Didn't Jesus do that when he multiplied the loaves of the fishes? Didn't he do that when he, when he made the wine out of water? He didn't 
plant the, the seed and wait for it to grow and wait five years for it to mature and, and then go crush the grapes and make a... He just... Faith. Faith does that. Jesus taught us that. And I submit to you that we're not using our faith. He wants us to bypass time to bring eternity into the now in our life. And that's what he taught us. Let's look at uh, one scripture here. In uh, Luke 19, 47, I got it right here. 19, 1 through 47. And I'm not going to be able to read all this but I'm just going to go through it and I'm going to skim through it and I'm going to hit some points here, okay? So, you all know the story. Jesus is coming to town in Jericho and this man named Zacchaeus, right? It says that he sought to see who Jesus was in verse 3. He sought to see who Jesus was. He had a hunger. He heard he heard of Jesus, so he like sought to see him. So he climbed a tree so he could see and get a better view. He got higher. He was lifting his eyes higher so he could get, anytime you go higher, you get a better view. He goes higher because he's like, I want to see Jesus. He's seeking Jesus. Here comes Jesus. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when he saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. He's the chief of tax collectors. So back in that day, he was like, one of the worst dudes, he, he was a traitor to, to the Jews, so they didn't want him in their synagogue, and they, it, he, was, he was an outcast. Nobody liked him. They hated him. But it's, it's really cool what, what, what happens here. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house. He didn't say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. He didn't say, he didn't go in a prayer of, of this is this and that. And Lord, he, he's, he showed repentance by his actions. He said, he said, I'll restore. He said, he, he, this is what he said. He, he showed fruits of repentance. To, and Jesus was like, that's it. Right there. Saved. I'm coming to your house. Salvation now is at your house today. Salvation has come to your house because he's seen who Jesus was. He's seen him and he sought him and he wanted to find him and he wanted to know him and he got what he wanted because he seeked and he find because the word of God says, seek and you shall find. And he got it and salvation came to him. And I think it's such a powerful, powerful story because you keep reading on here. Because in verse 10 it says, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now they heard these things and he spoke another parable to them because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. See, a lot of these guys had a wrong perspective of, of who Jesus was. They were taught a certain way, this is what the Messiah is, this is that, and this and that. So, so these, these guys can't see past their tradition. They can't see past their religiosity. They can't see past their experience. They can't see past who they think God is. So Jesus gives them a parable and says, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive himself a kingdom and, and to return. So he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10, ten minas, and said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to them that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. 
and came first saying, Master, your minna has earned 10. And he said to him, well done, good and faithful. Because you were faithful in very little, you will have authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, Master, your minna has earned five. Likewise, he said, you also will have over five cities. And the, another came and said, Master, here is your minna, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you because you were... You were an unsteer man. You collected what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? Then you would come in my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the minute from him and give it to those who have ten. But they said, Master, he has already ten. For I say to you that to everyone who has will be given. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Wow. Wow. And right after that, when he said this, he went ahead going up to Jerusalem and came to pass when he drew near to Bethage and Bethany at the mountain called Olive that he said to his disciples, okay, go in, get it. You, you know the story. He, he, he comes down on the donkey and they're all praising him. I'm, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. And the Pharisees, the Pharisees were calling out to, to him and from the crowd and saying, teacher, rebuke your disciples. They didn't like, they were crying out saying, Hosanna, son of David. They, they were crying out saying, peace in heaven and glory of God the highest. They were saying, this is blasphemy. Rebuke your disciples for saying this. And look what Jesus said. I tell you that if these should keep silent, that even the stones would immediately cry out. They couldn't see. They couldn't see him. But old Zacchaeus over here seen him. And he was excited about him. And he was a wicked, he wasn't even worthy to go to the, the, to the temple. They didn't even want anything. This guy was, was dirt. You see the results. And now Jesus, as he drew near, he, he saw the city and he wept over it. And he said, if you had known, if you had known, especially in this your day, the things that make of your peace, but they are now hidden from your eyes. Why? Because they rejected him. They rejected him, and what happened? They got destruction. Zacchaeus accepted him, and what? He got salvation. And he wasn't, he wasn't worthy. None of us are worthy. But these guys thought they knew something. They thought they knew. They knew it. We fall in danger anytime we think we know something so great that we, we can't be taught anymore. Oh, we know, we know. Jesus is standing there right in front of you, and you're saying, I don't need you, whatever. We don't want destruction. We see, though, I was reading this, and I was just like, man, you see the difference, the two drastic levels of believing Jesus and seeking him and going after him and finding him and salvation comes to your home and you're saved compared to the whole city was it says it is written my house oh yeah for days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you and surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground and they will leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. It's the exact same thing he just said in the parable before. Right at the end he said, bring, them, bring those enemies who did not want me to reign over them and slay me. It was like, this is what you're seeing. This is the exact result of what happens when we reject God. It, it's like you get destruction in your life. And, it, and if you don't repent, then... I don't want to miss the day of, and then it keeps going. It says, and he went into the temple, and he began to drive out those who bought and sold, saying, is it not written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves? 
And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and leaders of the people sought to destroy him and were unable to do anything for all the people were very attentive to hear him. So he goes, and that was when he's flipping the tables. It says, in another one, it says he made a whip, and he was whipping the, whipping the people and flipping over the, flipping over the thing and yelling at the people, making a big deal. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is shaking us, saying, get this stuff out of my temple. Quit watching this filth. Quit letting these things come before you. He's still speaking that to us. And how many times are we rejecting him and that voice? And when he's saying, quit, I want you to stop. I want you to change. I want you to quit allowing this in. And we just plug our ears and we keep doing it and we keep doing it. We don't want to miss the day of our visitation. We have to have him high, high, nothing else even close to him. He alone is worthy. He, he's worthy of our divine focus. And we can't harden our heart towards his conviction because thank God for his conviction. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your conviction. God, he, he loves us like a, like a son, like, like a child. And his correction proves that he loves us. And he keeps us. I also said that this is the year of, of Psalms 23. It's the year of the shepherd. And he has that, a good shepherd has, has that staff with the hook. So when we're going off, he grabs us and yanks us. Or if we're getting out, he smacks us with it. <laughs> right? Isn't that what a good shepherd will do? If he sees you getting out of line, he's, because he knows there's wolves right over there. He knows that there's coyotes. He knows that there's all these things over here. And if you keep going your own way, you're going to be dead. You're going to be lost. You're going to be gone. He loves us so much that he doesn't want us to have to go and get in a fight with wolves or get all this stuff. Because we, as long as we stay in his protection, we stay under the shadow of his wing. And that was why he, he woke me up and I thank God for it. And he woke you all up too. And I thank God for it. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit who keeps us, he keeps us in line. And when we get out of line, he, he smacks us one. And sometimes it hurts really bad. And sometimes it costs you a lot. But you know what? Sometimes that's what it takes. It, it, it takes something painful to, to, to get you to remember, I do not want to do this again. And I... Sin equals death. And, but God's grace is life. And, and, and his grace is sufficient for us. And I believe that this is the year of grace. It's the year of his favor. And I keep declaring that every day, that this is the year of the favor of the Lord over God's people, over you, over me. This is the year of his favor. This is the year of the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, 26 says, Lift up your eyes on high and see. I'm not going to go into all these because I, I could spend a lot of time on these, but Isaiah 51, verse 6 says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Isaiah 60, verse 4 says, Lift up your eyes all around and see. Psalms 123, verse 1 says, To you I lift up my eyes. There's a theme all through here. All through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, through Psalms, through Proverbs. God is saying, you become, you become what you meditate on. You know, the saying says, you become who you hang around. Who are you hanging around? It becomes evident. If you're spending time with Jesus, it becomes evident. You come around people, Jesus is coming out of you. You're hanging around people that are gossiping and, and, and just trash. You're filling yourself with, you come around somebody, it's evident because you're, you're speaking carnal things. Flesh is coming out of you. Because when you meditate on flesh, you get flesh. When you meditate on, on God, you get spirit and life, and you get all the fruits of the spirit and life. 
And we're meditating on him. We're sitting our mind on him. And he's taking us higher. He's taking us higher and higher because we're eagles. And he's calling us to soar with him. But that doesn't mean we're not going to have storms and adversities and things and, and strong winds. But as an eagle, an eagle learns how to use those things to his advantage. An eagle knows how to use the wind and the, and the, the rain and all these things to, to make him soar even higher, to soar higher. And God's calling us to soar higher. The, the, this whole message, and I barely got into it. If you want to go up and... And I'm going to share more on it when, whenever I can. Um, but God is calling us higher. He's calling us to see from his perspective. He wants us to see with the eyes of the Spirit. And tonight I'm declaring that over you, that we are going higher. And that the winds of adversity in your life, those things that, that the enemy's trying to destroy you with, God is, is teaching you how to use those very things to make you soar even higher in his presence and to have experiences with God that you never thought were possible because you are called, you are chosen, you are anointed. You have come too far to go back now. Even when he said to the disciples, the 70 said, when, when they all left him because they couldn't hear him, because they couldn't, grasp what he was saying they couldn't see past when Jesus said eat my flesh and drink my blood they couldn't see past the temporary all they could see was man this guy is weird they couldn't see past what he was really meaning and they missed it these are the same ones that did exploits and seen demons come out of people and seeing all these great miracles and things and and they come to Jesus and and they're all excited about it and Jesus is like don't get excited about that be excited because your name is written in the book of life he wants you to get your perspective right and he's getting our perspective right and those 70 left him because they, they said this is too hard this is too hard for us to understand why because they were too caught up in the temporal realm and that's where Satan lives and that's where he wants to keep you because when we're there he's winning when we're caught in that place of the cares of the world how am I going to do this this and that this that's all we can see we get blinders on us to where it's like it's like that man and, and when they went hunting all he was looking for is snakes and he couldn't see anything else what was going on around him and he missed out he didn't have fun at all he was miserable. God's calling us to rise up and to see him and what he's doing. And as we behold him, that's how we, as we behold him as he truly is, we become like him. The word of God says in 1 John, it says when we behold him as he truly is, we become like him. So as we have an have a understanding of who he is, that he loves us, that he is a good, good father, that he wants the best for us, that he's for us, he's not against us, that he has paved the way so we can walk with him on streets of gold. And I submit to you that those streets of gold are already right now. We don't got to wait to heaven because he's walking with us everywhere we go. Holy Spirit, we honor you tonight. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for your anointing, God. And Lord, we don't want to resist you. But God, we submit to you. And we submit to you and your word. And I thank you for fresh, fresh wind upon your people tonight, God. Lord, I just call the wind to blow upon your people tonight, refreshing over you in the name of Jesus to set your sights higher, to let that wind carry you into deeper realms of the Spirit, to higher places of the Lord. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you would know the hope of the call and what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. For you have been called, 
You have been anointed. You have been appointed. And there's nothing impossible for those who believe. And God has taken you higher to believe higher for Him. There might have been some things tonight that that were convicting to you, but that's okay. Me too. We let the Holy Spirit convict us so it leads us to repentance so we can go deeper in Him. And God, tonight we just come to you boldly and we thank you. We thank you that you love us. God, that we're that we are your sons and your daughters, Lord. I thank you, God, that you have great things in store for us. Lord, that this is the year of your favor. This is the year of restoration to your body. This is the year, Lord, we're going to see many souls saved. God, we're going to get these tents going, Lord, and we're going to rock this, this region with your glory, with your word. God, for your glory. It's not about us. It's about you, God. It doesn't matter who you use as long as you use someone. And Lord, here we are. We surrender. God, we surrender to you. And we surrender to your work. We surrender to your spirit tonight. And I thank you, God, that you are are blowing on us tonight, God. And we're going higher and higher and higher. Higher and higher with you, Lord. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. still 
not our move it's your move it's your move to rescue we partner with you with joyful hearts with joyful hearts 
Thank you, God. If anybody has anything they want to share or pray, please. Thank you, Jesus. The lion is roaring over you. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Lord, we thank you tonight. We lift our voice. God, we are warriors that you've put in the earth to proclaim your word. We are your mouthpiece and we roar tonight and we put our foot down and we say no more. No more. The enemy yes. can no longer have our ground. Yes, this is our ground and we take it. Yes, Lord. Yes. And we take it by force because it has been given to us and it's rightfully ours. And we drive out every demon, every foe. We command your assignment broken now. In the name of Jesus, we release you off of the body of Christ, off of this body right now. We command your power to be broken now. For he has come to destroy the works of the enemy. And he said, you will tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is his word to you and to me. We do not have to just sit by and let the enemy do his thing. And I say, no more tonight. Thank you, God. And I I declare right now, Lord, for manifestations now salvation is now God we're done praying and having to wait a year, two years, a month a day. it doesn't matter, we're done and we declare that now is salvation we declare that faith is now God when I read your word I do not see one time when you prayed that we had to wait God when you went and laid hands on the sick it didn't say God maybe one time it says as they went they were healed but God it says immediately and suddenly and immediately and suddenly and immediately and suddenly and immediately right now we declare salvation is now and we declare the fruit is now we declare the harvest is now we're not waiting four months God we declare it is now the fields are ripe now and we declare we put in the sickle and we reap all that you have for us everything that the blood of Jesus has provided for us everything Lord we're no longer going to be satisfied with crumbs and sprinkles but God you promised rivers of living water God you've named this place healing rivers Lord, we declare rivers are bursting forth. We declare that the floodgates are open now in Jesus' name. We declare that there's a river that's flowing in this place. There's a river that's flowing in this region. There's a river that's flowing in this country right now. Let it open up. Let it open up. Let it flow. There's an anointing that destroys every yoke. There's an anointing that removes every burden. There's an anointing that is flowing from His Spirit that is bringing healing to your body to everybody there shall not be one weak and feeble among you strength is rising in you you are a tree planted by rivers of living water your 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 fruit is blossoming your fruit is ripe for you are mature I declare this vision God that you've given this man of God this vision is coming to pass Lord it is he says he's been waiting 30 years and I declare no more waiting the time for waiting is done God we declare we are soaring with you God we have waited and we have mounted up God you have already counted down we have already launched God we are in motion and we are circling And I thank you right now, God. Right now. God, right now is our day. God, right now is the day of salvation. 
God, gee, even as Zacchaeus climbed up the tree to see you, God, we're climbing up and we see you and we say, God, our life is yours. If we've done anything wrong, God, we'll repay. We'll do whatever. God, here's our heart. Salvation has come to our house today. It is the day of our, this is the day of our visitation. This is the day of our visitation. This is the day, this is the year of the favor of the Lord. This is the day. And we declare it in Jesus' name. God, this is the day. This is the day that your healing is bringing forth. This is the day of your miracle. This is the day that he has made. And we rejoice. This is the day that you have made, Lord. This is the day of our visitation. And we will not miss it. And we will not reject you. We will not turn away from you. But God, we open our hearts and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It doesn't matter if we have to die on a cross. God, it doesn't matter if we have to get stoned. God, it doesn't matter what happens. Our life is yours. Every breath, every moment. And I declare the fire of God in this place. I declare breakthrough. I declare this this place is going to a whole new level. God, this is your will. We're not praying something amiss. We're praying your will, and we declare it in agreement. God, you are a God of signs and wonders. God, and we, we, we preach your word. Pastor preaches your word. He rightly divides it, and you promised. God, you said that signs and wonders follow the preaching of the word of God. So, Lord, I thank you tonight, Lord, that we are turning a corner. Lord, that there is a new chapter and it's called breakthrough. And it's called come up here and see. It's called come up here and see. Just like you told John, come up here and see. God, we lift our eyes and we come up here and we see what you're doing. And we come into agreement with you tonight. And it's destroying every work of the enemy. And it's treading on serpents. God, we're no longer going to just stand by and let the people be sick around us we're not going to let people die from cancer around us God you have commissioned us we're not taking no for an answer you've given us these promises Lord you said all of your promises are yes and amen and we're taking it all of it are you with me God, we stand as one body, as one, as one body, as one bride. God, married to Christ, as you are, so are we in the earth. Let it be so tonight, God. Let it be so tonight. There's a shifting that's taking place right now as we pray. Jesus said that from the time until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. And I declare tonight that we take it by force. This is ours. This is our region. This is our church. This is our body. This is our town. This is our nation. And we declare that we are the victors and that we go forth from victory to victory, from glory to glory, from triumph to triumph, Lord. If you're in this place, if you're in here tonight and you need, you need to be stirred up, you need your passion to be stirred up, you need your fire to be renewed, you need your vision to be re-sparked, rekindled, if you need healing in your body, I don't care what it is that you need, the anointing is here now to destroy yokes and to remove burdens. The anointing is here now to heal you. The anointing is here now because now is the time of salvation. If you need anything, if you're believing God, maybe you need your heart to be healed. 
Maybe it's something you're struggling with. Maybe it's something you haven't been able to overcome. Maybe it's something that you've been waiting for for years and you've yet to see it. Maybe it's you feel like God has failed you or God has let you down. Maybe you need healing from a wound that someone's inflicted. Maybe somebody died and you haven't been able to get past it. I'm telling you tonight, the Lord is here to bind up the brokenhearted. He's here to open up those doors that have bound you and kept you captive. He's here. Just lift up your hands and receive the love of the Father. He loves you. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you. He is here. He is ministering to you right now. The angels are here. Whatever it is, just give it to Him. Whatever it is, just tell Him. Just tell Him. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, we need you, Lord. We're desperate for you, God. We're desperate for you. Desperate for you tonight, Lord. There's a fire that he's stirring in his people. The army is marching. The fight is, is happening. It's, 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 it, we're in the midst of it. Don't think we're not. And we have to stand our place. We have to stay in the place God has put you to stand in. And you cannot become lazy. You are watchmen on the tower and you have to stay in your place and stay faithful with where he's called you to be and don't stop praying for your leaders don't stop praying for your pastors and your worship leaders don't stop praying for this nation because it's working don't stop praying for our leaders because because things are being exposed things are shifting things are happening behind the scenes Things are happening. God is exposing the truth. God is exposing the lies and bringing the truth. God is stirring you tonight. God is stirring us tonight as a body so we can burn brighter. He's refilling our lamps so we can burn brighter for Him. Those lamps that once were dim are now ablaze. He's calling you to be an inferno for Him. And I thank you tonight, God. We seal it, the work that you're doing in us. And God, I want to pray for my pastor, Lord, and his family. And I want to thank you for their faithfulness to the call of God. And I want to thank you for honoring him and his wife and their legacy, God. You are their legacy. And I thank you, God, that you are their exceeding great reward. God, he has laid his life down for you. And I thank you, God, that this is the year of restoration for him. This is the year that everything the enemy has stolen from him wrongfully, I declare that this is the year of total restoration. This is the year of your favor, Lord, upon this church, upon this body, upon this people. This is the year of the favor of the Lord. This is the year where the enemy must answer. And he must repay. Sevenfold. Not only sevenfold, but seven times sevenfold. And we'll take those in souls. And we'll take those in the lost. And we'll take those in the healings for the people. And we'll take those in revelations of glory upon the body and the services. We declare it. We declare it in the name of Jesus.
Somebody say amen tonight. We're going to pray for healing for Sandy. Not just Sandy, but her whole house. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Not just Sandy, but everyone else who's listening, her who needs it, who's watching. The anointing of God is here to heal you. And it's in this place right now. The word of God has gone forth. The, the gospel has been preached tonight. So right now we just declare the manifestation of of those miracles to spring forth now in the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus heals you now in Jesus' name. Lord, let it be released now, the glory of the Lord. 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 Of the Lord. Of the Lord. We rebuke. We rebuke every stronghold of the enemy in Jesus' name. God, we rebuke all cancer in the name of Jesus. We command it to go now. We command every sickness to go now in the name of Jesus. We command it. We command every ligament, every pain to go in the name of Jesus. We command complete restoration to that body right now in Jesus' name. Just receive it by faith. Come on. Just grab on to it right now. It is yours. It is yours. The blood of Jesus has made it yours. The blood of Jesus, every stripe upon his back was for your healing, was for your freedom. And I declare we come into agreement with the blood of Jesus that is speaking greater things. The blood of Jesus is speaking greater things than that of Abel. It is speaking life. It is speaking healing. It is speaking salvation over you. It is speaking wholeness over your body. Right now, receive it in the name of Jesus. Wholeness. 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 Not lacking anything, but complete, full salvation in everything that it means over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We release it right now. This, this is Healing Rivers. Lord, you've given this name. And Lord, you are the one performing it. We don't have to do nothing but get in the river. God, and it's, it's well over our heads. But Lord, you're teaching us how to, how to walk. How to walk. You're teaching us how to walk on the water. And we walk, Lord. And everywhere we go, those rivers flow and they bring healing. Everywhere we go. Because God, you said it. It's not something we're trying to formulate. We just come into agreement with what you've already spoken. And we declare it manifested now in the name of Jesus. thank you that these prayers tonight have literally activated earth and heaven Father I thank you that angels are literally being activated tonight to carry out the declarations and the prayers and the requests that have been made Father I thank you for that I ask you now in Jesus name Lord God we, we, we thank you Father God that you take ownership Lord God we claim ownership under your, under your authority 
of this region, Father God. I thank you that the enemy has to move out. Drug dealers have to move out. Father, I thank you the witchcraft has to move out. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that this region belongs to you. And Lord God, every every foul spirit that, that tries to imitate you has to move out in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the glory of the Lord. I thank you, God, that there is a deliverance taking place in this region. Father God, I thank you that there's a deliverance taking place in this whole region, Lord God. Demonic powers are being broken. Familiar spirits are being cast forth and cast out and stopped. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, that there is a power working in this place tonight and in this region. And Lord, we believe now, Lord God, that there are armies of heaven that are marching to secure ownership of this whole region. Every property that belongs to God, every place that belongs to God. Fathers was praying tonight, I saw fires beginning to burn all over this region. Lord, I thank you for the fire of God beginning to set upon this place, Lord God, upon this people and empowering this people in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks for that, Father God. Lord, I thank you that there is a revival sitting in this building. There is a revival in this region. Lord, there are people, Lord God, empowered to bring revival, to bring a move of God in this region. Lord God, you've already got them here. You've already got us positioned. Lord God, I thank you that revival is already here and present and being activated in the name of Jesus, a great awakening, a great outpouring of the Spirit of God is being activated, Father God, in this, in this region. And Lord, even in this house, God, I thank you that you are activating the people of God yes. to perform and to do the work that you have commissioned us to do. Yes. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, Glory. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. There's a revival in this area. <laughs> it's already happening. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God for his word. Yes. Amen. Thank you for the fire. Father, I ask you to bless each one that, that has come here tonight, those that are watching. Father God, I, and, and Lord, those that will watch. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that they they receive the prayers that are prayed tonight. I thank you for healings, miracles. I thank you for salvation. I thank you, Lord God, that deliverances take place right there in their house while they're watching. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, the, pow the powers of the devil are broken over people's lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we're not going to teach people how to cope with them. We're going to teach them how to be free of them. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that the power of the enemy is being broken. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen.